Amen. Yeah, we can give God some praise for that. Thank you all. Yeah, I want to uh, just say a special welcome to Channel District and to Davis Islands and all those who are over uh, in the West Auditorium uh, streaming us over there. It's just a joy to be here today with Trevor. And I just want to go to that, uh, that last slide, 89 baptisms in a year. I think you've been there in Denver a year now, but just tell us real quick, how many church services have you guys had where you've seen those baptisms happen? <laughs> That's a trick question. It is. That is a total. Inten- qu- I asked it intentionally. It's actually a wrong stat as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't mean to lie, but God has been moving, and we actually had another baptism this past Wednesday. So shout out to mm-hmm. ninety people getting baptized, and uh, we haven't had one church service. One church service. Not one. Sorry, we've been telling you that they've had zero <laughs> church services. So they've had one church no, no, service. No, not one. Not one. Not one. Not so you're one. right. Okay, Zero. so I am right. So we have not been telling yeah. a lie, right? No, no, no lie. So we've had no church service yet. We've seen 90 people yeah. baptized, and I can't wait to dig into that with you yeah. uh, today because it really, truly is a story of God's grace. But Trevor Lovingood, welcome to STF. We're so grateful that you and your family are here with us today. Why don't you take a minute and introduce us? I know you. I've known you for years, JJ, as well. Uh, but tell us a little about you. Tell us a little bit about your family as well. Yeah, that sounds good. So my wife's name's Erica, and... Uh, She is amazing. She actually uh, runs all of us. So you know how that is. I know Uh, know know how it is. And then uh, we have three kids. London is uh, seven. Leo is six. He just turned six. And then Zeke, uh, the one with his mouth open, is uh, two. And he is wild. So that's the squad. And we live downtown Denver, Colorado, and we're having a blast. Mm. So uh, we love life doing all the things. We've gotten into hockey. Uh, I'm kind of Florida, Go Tennessee Bolts. guy, okay, right? Now we're playing hockey, so just trying to get right into the Denver uh, community and culture. So, yeah, man, that's a little bit. Love that. And so as, as JJ said, you know, Trevor and his family are coming on as, as some of our newest church partners. And if you've been around SCF for any bit of time, you've heard us talk about uh, many of our church partners. We have them uh, really all over the country, and uh, really just the why behind that is because we believe the kingdom of God is bigger than STF, yeah. and we believe that we can go farther together, yeah. not t- siloed. And uh, as we find and see people that have the same uh, uh, mindset about uh, missions, the same mindset about evangelism, about church that we do, uh, we want to come alongside them, support them in any way they can, and also have them support us. And we've learned so much from you, Trevor, and your many years of, of experience. Again, like I said, I've known you for a while, and I've heard about this journey that you've been on to take you to, uh, to Denver. But just for the rest of us, why don't you just for a minute talk to us about how do y'all go from... Knoxville, Tennessee, your right. most recent destination or, or, or place of living, to Denver, Colorado. What was that transition like? How did God get you from that place to there? It's a really long drive, first off. It is. I've so, never done it, but I would assume. Uh, my wife is amazing. She, we got blessed by, just real quick, we got blessed with a job, and it was one of the things that we were praying for. I think if you're going to make that kind of move... Uh, or you're going to make that kind of commitment, the, the prayer gets a lot like, hey, God, what are you trying to do? I have a few things I need to see you come through on m- miraculously, so to speak. One of those was my wife uh, needing a job uh, because, you know, health care is a big deal. And it just is insurance is important, you know. And so uh, that was one of the things that we were praying for. And, and she actually ended up starting a job early. So I got to make the journey with all three kids uh, by myself. Uh, to the glory of the Lord, and uh, it was, uh, we had a blast doing that, but so it's like, why would we do that? Well, it started uh, 10 years ago. My wife and I, we've been married for about a decade now, uh, coming up on that, and right after we got married, we made a trip out to Denver, Colorado, because I had a family member who lived in the city, and we were going to just kind of uh, be newly married and travel a little bit and, and see the mountains and spend some time together and hang out, and it was amazing, and we ended up wanting to go spend time with my, my uncle or cousin, kind of like the uncle-cousin relationship, and when we were spending time with him, he doesn't know Jesus, and he's very intelligent, and he's really committed. He even had kind of like his own thing on a TV show, so he's a little famous, and, uh, and he's this amazing guy, and we spent time with him and his wife, and uh, we just love them so much, and We saw ourselves being able to be attracted to a city that we loved, but it was also because I had a family member and a friend that I loved, and they were far from God. And so we actually, 10 years ago, said, you know what, we could see ourselves living here because we have people here that we love, we 
we like this city and if we kind of relate to it. And so in the back of our minds, personally, we kind of went on this journey for 10 years to say, you know what, maybe one day, mm. you know, maybe one day. And then throughout that, this past 10 years, the Lord kept preparing us. Every step of faith that we took, God kept preparing us to actually move across the country. We just didn't know it yet. Mm. And then it came time for us to really think about, hey, where, where are we going with our life? And one of the reasons I love my wife is that she looks at me on a regular basis and says, hey, just real quick, are we settling here? You know, are you settling for less than? And I'm like, whoa, babe, like, I like where we live. <laughs> I like these people. I like this house. I like what we're doing. We're making an impact in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're making an impact here. And she said, you know, I think you may be getting a little comfortable. And uh, I don't know if you've married a, uh, someone like that, but uh, shout out to you, okay? You need to thank God for them. Um, because at the core, we're called for more. Mm -hmm. Like there's something that, that desires more. And honestly, at the end of the day, it's just more of him. I just, Lord, I just need you to use me more. I just want more of you. I want more of that love that surpasses all understanding, that peace that surpasses all understanding, that, that you that helps me understand my purpose and value and worth and identity. And I just want more of you, God. That's it. So whatever that step of faith that I need to take is, I'll do it. And then with miracles like my wife's job and, and quite, there was about, there was a list of 11, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Was that right? There was a list of about 11 of them that we wrote down. We fasted, prayed over, and over uh, really a year of like leaning in, we came to the conclusion. I was like, hey, uh, this is a risk worth taking because these people uh, are the same type of people that the Lord gave his life for, mm. just like me, just like you. And the city's 98% lost. 98% mm. of 3 million to 5 million people, depending on how you want to count, whether it's metro or the general area or along the front range or whatever, 98% of these people do not know Jesus. They can't even have Jesus misrepresented because they don't even have a beginning point of Jesus. They just need to have Jesus presented. You know, like, we just need to present this bat, like yeah. this guy. And so, uh, so, yeah, that's where we were. And we just want to be a part of that solution. We felt like the Lord has called us to say, hey, let's be a lighthouse on this. I love that. Street. And I love just from so many conversations you and I have had is that you, you guys made that decision. The Lord made it abundantly clear. You yeah. went, you left. God bless you. Three kids across the country. Um, I don't think you'll get more in heaven for that, but we can pray <laughs> that you will. Um, but what I love is that we have now seen, there's a lot of, you know, me and you in the church world, we know there's sure. different methods for how do you plan a church? What do you do? When do you, you know, you run out of space. Yeah, I mean, whatever it is. I love that the Loving Goods moved to Denver and planted their life there. Mm. And because you planted their life there, a church is being born. And we've been in this series, you know, ambassadors represented, misrepresented Jesus. And you might not be re-representing whatever you want to call it there, <laughs> yeah. but you're representing right. Jesus well. And the fruit of that is seen in, in what we're going to talk about even later, but we mentioned in the video. But I just want to ask you, if you, you could just take a moment as a pastor to pastor our church, um, how have you planted your life? with these people to live on mission? And what could maybe we learn from you and how you've done that? Because like, again, I think sometimes for us, it's, it's, it's like, well, I'm, I don't get on a stage and preach. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, how do I even make that turn from do you know about God to do you wanna become a Christian, you know? Right. And you, we've, you have seen that happen so many times since you've been there and even before that, and that's been your life and ministry up to this point. So just for a moment, maybe just kind of like speak into us about how we can maybe be people who represent Jesus kind of in a way that you have in Denver. The first thing that I think of, Chris, is I think of honor. I know this is going to be kind of like a little bit of a, a turn in, in thinking, but this is a good step for me. Uh, honor. Who has helped me get to where I am? And I honor them with my life by going further than they have gone mm. because they have poured their lives into mine. And that is worth it and worthy. So Pastor JJ um, has poured his life into mine, practically mm -hmm. and very specifically, in a time where I, maybe I wasn't worth <laughs> pouring into. <laughs> and so uh, people and pastors like him and like yourself as friends have, 
have given me wisdom. And if I don't use it to advance and help others find what I have found, what have I really found? Mm. I'll say it again. If I don't help other people find what I have found, what have I really found? And my, like the guy who discipled me, his name's Dwight Bass. He was a, uh, a missionary in uh, the Middle East, Africa, Middle East for a long time. And he poured his life into me uh, over 12 years. And he has helped me come to understand that it is about sharing the journey, mm. sharing my life with others. That's it. Who are you sharing your life with? Stop worrying about where you're not and worry and focus on where you are. Mm. Like a lot of times we think we've got, to, we've got to save the world. Well, why don't you start with your world? Because the world gets changed when you start with your own. Mm -hmm. Like have the conversations you actually need to have with the people that are sitting next to you in the room. Don't worry about who you don't know that's on, across the street. Have an intimate, genuine, and real conversation that is of some depth and where you actually are with the person that you married or that you're dating or that you're in a deep relationship, friendship with. And then you'll see it flow from there because you're so full of who God is and what he's pouring into your life that it just overflows as you go. And that's the point. I think when you look at Jesus, as he went, he was impacting everybody. As he went. And you see him get interrupted all the time. And the question that we like to ask ourselves is, are we interruptible? Mm. Yes, we can be doing things on purpose, with purpose, that are of immense, intense value. You have a job interview, you got to get it. Let's get that bad boy. You know what I mean? But on the way there, why don't you create some margin and pray, Lord, who is on my path on the way there? Because somebody is looking into your life that you're not seeing. Mm. Everywhere we go, somebody is looking into our life that we're not noticing that we don't give a time of day to, that we don't plan on, that we don't pray for, and it's the barista at Buddy Brew or it's the, it's the person in between where your desk is and where the, um, the person that's over you is. And it's like, it's everywhere we go, there are people that we see and that look at us and we don't even have enough time to open our mouth and be interruptible and ask them how they are and ask them where they are and invite them into our own lives. Well, Share I, the journey. I love that. And you know, we were, we were talking this week, <clears throat> you know, that idea that the barista, the buddy brewer, the person that you sit next to or you're, you're in the checkout line with the Publix yeah, or whatever right. it is. You made a statement to me and I think it plays into why you have called your church Ever, Ever Denver. Yeah. Um, you said if, if we really do believe that people live forever, and everything else that doesn't live forever doesn't really matter as much. Mm. Talk about for you just some very practical things you and your family do in light of the fact that people live forever. Yeah, I think when Pastor JJ says uh, we have to let action kind of line up to what we say we believe, that's it. Mm -hmm. If I say I believe it, then my life needs to reflect the thing that I say that I believe. Super simple, but a lot of times uh, there's a huge disconnect so why would anyone want the life that I actually live if my life doesn't look like what I say I believe? Mm -hmm. they, don't need, they don't need the Jesus a lot of times that I live with because my life doesn't look anything different than theirs. Mm. If, if my life is supernatural and not natural, then that means that there's something super about it so that they want it so that I get them Jesus, mm. who is the supernatural piece of my life. And so the game changer is how can you do something so minuscule and average? I love, uh, if you have not, picked up uh, my most for his highest the Oswald Chambers thing that that Oswald Chambers uh, compilation book that JJ was talking about you need to pick it up like it's good um, I read that thing for three years uh, in a row and I didn't need a lot a lot else other than the Bible in that because what Oswald does there is he says hey there's uh, you know you want to know where a follower is made a disciple is made among average streets among average people doing the most average things supernaturally amen supernaturally well, Trevor, how do I do that? Uh, it's time for you to pray for real. That's it. Just pray for real for the day and for what's actually going to happen in the day. It's time for you to actually walk with Jesus and be aware of his presence as you go throughout your day. Change your life. 100% change your life. You start being aware of the presence of God and you start saying, God, what do you have for me in this moment that is so average? Make it supernatural. Redeem this moment. Buy it back mm. from what I can do it and make it what you would do. Mm. 
and I start representing God as his ambassador by looking like him. Mm. How would Jesus have this really difficult conversation? He would view this person as more important than himself, and he would lay his life down for his friend. Why? Because that's what greatness love looks like. Like this Bible actually, if lived out, will change your life. Mm -hmm. We talk about it and we think about it. I do that, by the way. And then I'm challenged by people like my wife (laughs) or or you. And uh, it's like, hey, uh, what's God doing? Well, if I don't have a a story to tell of what God's doing, then he's probably not, I'm probably not allowing him to do anything in my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's just, it's just really practical for me. So it's getting to know my neighbor. It's walking with the people that God is highlighting and putting in our life. It's just sharing our life with him. Mm -hmm. And it's making space for that to do that. (sighs) Practical. Uh, I text different. That's the practical. You want to know practical? I text different. Yeah, you text all the time. You'd rather text than call anyone. Why don't you start texting a little bit different? Uh, Actually, uh, a second ago, I just had somebody text me, and I texted them back because he is inviting me to his house. He doesn't know Jesus, and he's inviting me to his house uh, for Memorial Day. He's throwing a party on Memorial Day. Just a second ago, on the front row. And I'm like, I shouldn't be texting in church, but we're texting about God, so it's okay. That's okay. That's right. That's right. It's okay. Uh, JJ wasn't talking, okay? It was... was, uh, it was a different moment. It was a different moment. Uh, don't judge me. And uh, uh, I'm texting you back. We'll be there for the first half because we've got to get the kids down for the second half. And I'm going to make sure that we bring something. He doesn't know Jesus. We've been texting about uh, things of God, but then also just real life. And uh, I'm praying that he comes to know him. Mm. So it's, it's seeing this, this barbecue afternoon Memorial Day that, that I have now gotten invited to because I've been inviting him into my life. You see how the gospel mm-hmm. works? Yeah. I've been in, inviting him into my life on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. We started at Bacon Social. It's a good start to start a relationship, mm-hmm. a place called Bacon Social. <laughs> and uh, we start there and we just talk about life and we just share our life with each other. And then guess what? We get to a point where he says, hey, would you and your family like to come over uh, for Memorial Day? Mm-hmm. Yes, I would. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And we've just been texting of things of God. He's in the military. So guess what? There's a story about a guy in the military Mm -hmm. who meets with Jesus. He's called the Roman centurion. Mm -hmm. So guess what we've been talking about? The Roman centurion. He says this to me. He says, hey, Chris. Um, He says, well, he says like this. He's like, hey, yo. uh, He didn't talk to me. Yeah, no, he's talking to me. Uh, I've never cracked this thing open, meaning the Bible. I've never opened this thing. Where do I begin? And then why do people say, like, do I begin at the beginning? And it's like, wait, don't begin at the beginning because it's a compilation of books. Let's begin somewhere else. And he's like, what? That's weird. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like people don't even know where to begin, so don't worry about it. Help them where they are. Uh, So that's the practical. I hope that kind of I love that, it's again, it's it's not overcomplicating it. No. It's we are using everyday moments that all of us have. We talked a few weeks ago about... Um, how do we represent Jesus in just the everyday aspect of our life? Because most of life is lived in the everyday, right. not in the extraordinary. No. But in the everyday, seeing people, they live forever, they've got an eternity in front of them, and they have an opportunity to meet Jesus or miss Jesus in this moment. And I love this past Tuesday, I was with our young adult ministry, and Pastor Danny said something that I have just stolen completely, and I'm going to use it for myself. Um, <laughs> but he, he did say, he said this, he said, who do you know in your life that's far from God but close to you? Because if they're close to you and you're close to God, they're not that far from God. And if we are God's ambassadors, his A plan, we are the ones that he has called, the varsity team. He doesn't have any backups. It's us. If you're waiting for that, man, I wish that person just come to the Lord. Do they know you? (laughs) Because maybe that's what God is waiting on, is to use you for them to come to the Lord. And I love just, again, we talked about how You've seen fruit in that. You don't, you're not just a, a philosopher. You don't just sit in an ivory tower and give, uh, here's some methods that you and the church world can do. I mean, we, we are seeing almost 100 people be baptized in a year. And, you know, we are just so, uh, we're just so grateful, Trevor, uh, for the opportunity to come alongside uh, you, come alongside your family. Um, and uh, it, it truly is just a joy to see what God is doing in and through you guys um, in uh, endeavor. I'm going to have you stand up real quick. We're going to take a moment just, and just kind of pray over you. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, again, the beautiful fruit about what you have been doing is um, you're seeing life change through people following Jesus and being obedient to baptism. 
And, and we, we believe here that baptism is that first step of obedience after you've given your life to Jesus. And it is, uh, it, it is an amazing experience that you can have, not one that gets you closer to God, not one that makes you more saved, but one that demonstrates your uh, relationship with Jesus. And tonight, like we said in the announcement video, we have an opportunity for you in this room to take that step. And maybe you've been contacted by somebody this week and you've taken a moment uh, to think about or process what that could look like. Or maybe even as Trevor's talking here and you're, you're seeing these people on a screen go into a dunk tank looking thing and give their, uh, like giving their life to Jesus and being baptized. And you're thinking, man, I, I've never taken that step. I want to encourage you with something. After we take a moment and pray for Trevor, as you leave, right out here at this blue wall, we're going to have some folks there, some people on staff, some pastors here. And they'd love to talk to you about you taking that step of obedience. Maybe it's even tonight you take that step of obedience. You come out to Pitnick Island with so many others in our church, and you celebrate. If you're at one of our other campuses and, and your lobby's there um, and the staff's there, they can help you kind of figure this out about what those next steps for you even could be. But here's our goal today. We wanted this, the obedience of Trevor and his family to prompt obedience for us. I think all of us could be more obedient in following Jesus by sharing him with those around us. But I think for some of you in this room, if you're honest, you need to be obedient to be baptized. And we'd love to make that happen for you tonight. So Trevor, we are just, uh, just grateful. I'm grateful for your friendship, grateful for just our relationship. And uh, you don't learn much from me. I learn a lot from you, man. <laughs> That's Seriously. not true. That's and, not true. Uh, so I want to invite us to do something. Would you just stand to your feet um, all across our campuses and uh, in our different environments? And uh, wherever you are, I'm going to lay some hands on, on Trevor. But I just want to invite you just to extend your hand if you're able to towards the stage. And we're just going to take a moment and we're just going to pray over Trevor, his family, pray forever, Denver, and that, that God would move uh, through them um, as they uh, now kind of officially begin gathering as a, uh, a church. Would you join me and let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for you. We are so grateful for the fact that you have given us, empowered by your spirit, the opportunity to represent you. You could have chosen any other method, but you chose us, Jesus. Like the angels in the book of Psalms, it says, like, who, who are we as men and women that you would favor us? God, we have fallen short, and yet you still choose to use us. And we say thank you for that. And Father, I thank you for Trevor and Erica and their family, the example that they set for so many, not just for me, but so many who know them, who watch them, who see how you move in their life. Father, I pray you would bless them abundantly. Holy Spirit, empower them with strength on days when it is difficult and they want to throw in the towel. Holy Spirit, challenge them on days where they feel like they're maybe settling because it's more comfortable. Holy Spirit, give them divine appointments and the wisdom and strength to step in obedience as they continue to advance your kingdom here in Denver as it is in heaven. God, I pray that as they begin to just plan logistics around church gatherings and spaces and sermon series and budget and everything that comes with leading a church, God, would you just give them divine appointments, supernatural connections, and wisdom from your spirit, God. And I pray for us as a church, would we be inspired by their obedience and challenged to live in a way that reflects you, Jesus. I pray that we as a church, not just me, not just JJ, not just our staff, but we as a church would be sensitive to you, Holy Spirit, about ways that we can partner with this family, we can love and support and pray for this family. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being good to us, good to the loving goods, and thank you for our partnership with them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you all give it up for Trevor and his family one more time?